In this problem, we're told a child goes down a playground slide that is inclined at an angle of 26.5 degrees below the horizontal. Find the acceleration of the child given that the coefficient of kinetic friction between the child and the slide is 0.315. So the first thing you always want to do for these problems is to draw what's going on and draw a free body diagram representing uh, the forces acting on the object. So in this case, it's going to be the child. So what we have here is we have this slide. It's going to be angled at 26.5 degrees. We have this child on top, and we know the coefficient of kinetic friction is going to be 0.315. So that's what we have, the information we're given. And so what we want to do now is label the forces acting on the object. So we know we have the force mg, which is just the weight force going straight down. So we have that. We also have the normal force going straight up, right? And it's going to be perpendicular to the incline. So keep that in mind because it's just perpendicular to the object it's touching. That's what the normal force is. We also have a force of friction that's going to be going the opposite way it's traveling, which is going to be this way. And so we also, uh, what you need to do now is find the X and Y components of the gravity force. So whenever you label the forces, you always want to find the X and Y components of each. And so when I talk about the X, uh, X, right, so I'm going to refer to the X axis in this. And when I say that, I'm going to be talking about this, essentially. The, along this line is the X axis, and Y is going to be perpendicular to that. So this is the Y axis, this is the X. So just keep that in mind, because I'm going to mention that later on. So when I say the X component, I'm basically talking about uh, X component of the weight force. I'm talking about the... Uh, the weight force that's along this line, and then when I say the y, I'm talking about the one along uh, this way, right, where I said the y-axis is. So the way we find it is what you can see, right, imagine this is straight up, you want to draw a triangle like this. And so when I say the x component, I'm talking about this right here, x, and then this is y. So the way we find it is by drawing a triangle. So imagine this triangle right here represents this triangle that I drew right here. And so mg is basically this line right here, which is the hypotenuse of your triangle. So this is mg. And then the angle, which is this angle right here, is the same as the angle of the incline. So this is actually 26.5. And what we're trying to find is x, which is this right here. It's opposite to the angle. And then y, which is this right here. So we're trying to find the x component and the y component of our weight force. So to find the x component, you just use a sine. So in this case, the sine of the angle, which is 26.5, we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite is x to the angle, and then over the hypotenuse, which is mg. So solving for x, which is the x component, you multiply both sides by mg, and you're going to get the x component of the weight force is mg to the sine of 26.5. So now for the y component, you're going to use cosine. So we know the cosine of an angle, in this case it's 26.5, is equal to, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so the adjacent is y, hypotenuse is that, or sorry, the adjacent is y, hypotenuse is mg. So y over mg, multiply both sides by mg, and now we have the y component of the weight force. So mg times the cosine of 26.5. And so that's going to help us when we solve uh, the, some things later on. But now what we want to do is take the sum of the forces in the x direction. And you'll see why we do this in a second. But the sum of the forces in the x direction are going to be equal to ma. Because we know we're moving at some acceleration, we know the net force is just equal to ma. And so the net force is, base, uh, is the same thing as the sum of the forces in the x. So when I say x, keep in mind I'm talking about this again. So we're going to say ma right, is equal to the sum of the forces in the x. So what we want to do is add up the forces along this line. So one of the forces we have is the force of friction. And anything that's going to the left, I'm going to say is negative. And anything going to the right, I'm going to say is positive. So since force of friction is to the left, it's negative. So equals minus F sub F. And then we're going to plus uh, the X component of the weight force because it's going to the right. And Q minus along the X. So the X component of the weight force is mg times the sine of 25. So plus mg times the sine of 26.5. And so now we've got this formula. Notice uh, we're solving for acceleration. So if we divide both sides by m, what we need to do now is we know the mass, or well, we don't know the mass, but it's going to cancel out later on. And then we know g and we know 26.5. So what we need to find now is the force of friction. So how do we do that? So we know the force of friction, or the formula for it, for an object that's moving, is mu sub k times f sub n. And we already know mu sub k, so in order to find the force of friction, we just need the normal force now. So how do we find the normal force? The way we find the normal force is by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction instead. So the sum of the forces in the y is going to be equal to 0. So in this case, it equaled ma because we're moving along the x-axis. In this case, we don't move at all along the y, right? We don't go up at all. So it's just equal to 0 because if we don't move in it, the acceleration is 0. So 0 equals, and now we're adding, just like we added the x, we're going to add in the y. So in the y, we have two forces, f sub n, and then we have the y component of the weight force. So we say 0 equals, and then just like this one, if it was to the right, it's positive. In this case, it's up, it's positive, and then down is going to be negative. So 0 equals f sub n because it's going upwards, and then you want to minus 
the y component of the weight force, which is just going to be mg times the cosine of 26.5 because it's going down. So what this tells you, if you add mg, this thing to the other side, it's just going to be equal to the normal force. So f sub n is mg times the cosine of 26.5. So that's going to give you the normal force. And so what we can do now, since we have the normal force, we just multiply by mu sub k, and we can find the force of friction and plug it in. So a is going to be equal to, well, let's plug it in, so mu sub k, or I'm just going to write the variables actually, mu sub k times f sub n is the f, f sub f, right? So minus mu sub k times f sub n, which is mg times the cosine of 26.5, and then it's just going to be plus mg times the sine of 26.5 divided by uh, m. And so you should notice each term has an m, so it'll just cancel. So really, you just get a equals minus mu sub k times g times the cosine of 26.5 plus g times the sine of 26.5. So I'm not going to rewrite the equation with the variables in it, but just keep in mind what they are. g is just going to be 9.8 or 9.81. I'm going to go ahead and use uh, 9.8. You can use 9.81 if you like. And then mu sub k is, they give it to us, it's 0.315. So if you go ahead and plug it in, you're going to get that it equals, uh, or a equals 1.61007. So really it's just equal to 1.61. And then it's going to be meters per second squared, because that's the units we use to measure acceleration. So it's going to be accelerating, or the acceleration of the child is 1.61 meters per second squared. But yeah, so this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.